Welcome to another edition of The Word on Woodward. I'm Daniela Bruce alongside Art Regner and joining us today, Tigers outfielder Austin Meadows. Austin, thank you so much for joining us, especially on your 27th birthday, right? Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I wish the weather was a little nicer, but it's yeah, all good. And I mean, you really wanted the weather to be a little yeah. nicer. We're, we're, <laughs> coming you from might LA. get frostbite here today, <laughs> yeah, but that's right. all right. Exactly. Yeah, coming from hey, LA. Hey, it was his was, choice. Was we didn't insist he wear shorts, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's get into this. Last time we talked to you, it was actually at a Red Wings game over at Little Caesars Arena, and you had been a Tiger for just a week mm -hmm. at that point. Now that you've had a little bit more time, tell us how you're feeling about the organization and how you're adjusting. It's great. Everybody's been really, really good. Um, you know, being able to experience Mickey's 3000th hit and just kind of be a part of all that excitement has been really, really special. Mickey's a great guy. Everybody's been really good to me. Uh, coming over here has been really, really good. I can't believe it's already been a month. Um, but, you know, for me, having a lot of fun with the guys, you know, there's a lot of good good dudes on this team, starting with, with the top, with, with AJ and Al and, and everybody here. Uh, they've welcomed me with open arms and uh, treated me really well, and it's been a lot of fun so far. You're 27? 27. I have articles of clothing that are older than you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Whoa. Yeah. But the reason I want to ask you this, big, like birthdays, were they a big celebration when you were a kid? Or was Parker all jealous because you're getting all the attention and the gifts? Or <laughs> how did it all play out? Family goes all out. They went all out for both of us, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, being being younger, we would obviously have some big parties growing up and stuff. But now being at, being at work, it's almost... I hate to say it, but it's almost another day, you know, but, you know, you try to celebrate it. You know, you get to call your parents, you, get, you know, for me, being, you know, my parents are back home in Georgia, but I got to talk to them this morning. Uh, they sent some, th some things up and, uh, yeah, I just miss them a lot and, and miss, miss uh, you know, miss spending birthdays at home, but it is what it is. And I'm just, just excited, excited to be here and excited to have all the support I have. Well, your all-time favorite birthday gift. Oh, I mean, something that man. you still this day, you just say, man. That was the best birthday ever. I finally got yeah. my, uh, right. you know, oh, Georgia that's... Bulldog T-shirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, there. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I don't know birthday, but Christmas. I got a truck. It's hard to say. You an know, actual usually truck? I, I, yeah, I did. I got actual. It was actually it was my first car. It was my my, my first truck um, <gasps> when I was in high school. Dodge Ram, 2008 Dodge Ram. Oh. Uh, I wasn't in high school then. I was in high school a little bit after that. Sorry to say that, but. Uh, Were no. you old enough to drive? Yeah, I, was, I was 16. I was 16. Right, right. Uh, no, but yeah, I would say a truck for Christmas. For birthday, it's usually nice clothes, nice shoes. It's hard to put a put a memory on a special one, but they've all been pretty special. Okay, I want to ask you about a specific moment. We're going to have to go back a little bit, but you mentioned being here for Miggy's 3,000th hit, which was an awesome moment. But I think it was the game before that that he actually got the hit against the Yankees when they decided to intentionally walk Miggy you come up the yeah. boos were louder than i've ever heard and what were you thinking in that moment because they walked in thinking they might have a better shot with you at the plate i was just ready to hit <laughs> um you know i think i kind of knew that it was coming because yeah. i knew that you know there was a lefty on the mound i had faced him before and he had a little bit of success off of me so i kind of knew that miggy was going to be walked um and i kind of was ready for the at bat so that's why i swung so early because i was just kind of already planning it out in my head that i was going to come up to the plate um and yeah i think you know you, you have someone you know especially if it's miggy or whoever it is get walked in front of you you know that kind of shows that you know that manager would rather face you and it, it kind of like gives you a little spark gives you a little motivation and I think I just kind of took that upon myself to, you know, be ready early, and and that was awesome there to kind of get the two runs, and you know, Miggy gave me a big hug, and that was just a really, a really cool moment. Yeah, I was pumped. I know I, when you went up there and got the hit, I was pumped. I was like, yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, no, that was cool. I, I was, was too. Big, trust me. <laughs> I knew it was a big mistake. I, I knew it was going to come back to haunt Booney, and it did. He actually, though, after the game, because you have a little bit of a history being from Tampa, you know, playing for the Rays against the Yankees, but I, you know, he said, look. We have enormous amounts of respect for Meadows, too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's just situational. So it does give you a pump up. But, you know, you kind of understand it's not a lack of respect towards you as a player. Right. No, no, I, I, it really is. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a baseball move. Uh, I, I totally understand it. You know, I've obviously, you know, faced the Yankees a lot of other times, playing with the Rays in the past and had some success off of them. So, you know, I, I understand that it's definitely not a disrespectful thing. It's just a baseball move. Um, it's clean. And, you know, obviously with it being with, with Miggy and everything like that, to, it was kind of, you know, obviously in, in, in his sense, you know, it's, it's tough to, it's a tough pill to swallow because you want to get that hit, you know, and he was able to obviously do that. But, you know, I think in, in that moment, um, yeah, you just kind of, you just kind of go with it. You understand the game, the, the side of the game. 
and you just go with it. So we've talked a little bit about your brother, Parker, who is also in the Tigers organization. That has to be cool for you guys, and he's been really good this season. He's having a good season too, so hopefully you two both get to play in Detroit at one point. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it's It's been a very surreal experience uh, this, this year so far. Um, I could have never told you I would, I would be here. You know, that's just the beauty of baseball. Uh, you know, everything tends to work out, you know, the way it's supposed to. And, you know, I believe I'm, I'm here for a reason. And, you know, being obviously in the same organization as Parker and getting to, you know, watch him play and being pretty close to him. Um, I have, we haven't got to hang out yet, but I'm able to keep up with his games. I know he's an Erie, um, you know, playing. I think he's playing right now. But, you know, being able to, to watch those games. And sometimes our games are different times. So I'm able to keep an eye on him and keep following him and what he's doing. And I'm really happy for him. And, you know, I think him coming over this year and Big League spring training, getting some at-bats over here with the, with the Big League squad, gave him that confidence. He has some success over here in spring training. So to give him that confidence going into the year, and it's showing so far. Mm -hmm. Tigers have gotten off as a team slow start offensively, but you have it. You lead the team in hitting, uh, and you know, and hopefully the weather will break by August here, and you know, maybe you're a warm August. weather. <laughs> yeah, they, Don't scare them out of here. At best, or, or maybe we'll have an Indian summer, and so you can look forward to September. Will be really nice. Uh, but with that said, why do you think it's gone well for you this season? Are you just seeing the ball well, or? Uh, you, you, because, you know, obviously you've been, you know, I hate to say it like this, and I'm overstating it probably, kind of a revelation. Uh, yeah, I think for me, um, I feel comfortable in the box. Uh, you know, I think it's obviously still very early, but I think, um, you know, anytime you go in and roll into April, it's cold. You you know, you, I think for me, I've just been trying to, to be aggressive, but also I've, I feel like I've been patient at the same time. I haven't been trying to do too much. Um, and I think that's in the past where I've gotten in a little bit of trouble is, is being a little over aggressive at the plate and trying to do too much, trying to get hits. Uh, for me, I'm not really looking to do that. I'm just looking to, to try to have good at bats, really. Um, you know, I think for me, when as a player, when you start to kind of search for hits or search for home runs or search for whatever it is, you can kind of get in a hole pretty quick. So for me, I feel like I've had a patient approach up there. I've kind of let the hits come to me and just try to have good at bats. And I feel like I've been seeing the ball pretty well and being able to see a lot of pitches helps. And it's like I said, so far, it's been it's been good. Like Art said, the team hasn't gotten off to as strong of a start as you have individually. One in seven in the last eight games. Hitting hasn't really gotten going, but baseball, it's a long season. It's a streaky sport, and it happens. I just want to know from your perspective, how, do you, how does the team pull out of this? Like, what's the mindset to make sure that you don't end up continuing the streak and getting back on a hot streak? Just keep working. Uh, keep your, put your head down and keep working. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You know, we understand that the nature of the game, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's a bunch of ups and downs in this game. We understand we've only played 20, 20, 21 games, I think right. it is, uh, and we have, you know, 140 plus left. So we, we just continue to put our head down and continue to try to scratch together, put together some wins. Um, I know it's obviously easier said than done. You know, we, we haven't got off to the start that we wanted to, but like I said, going back to it being a really long season, you could go, you know, you could go a couple of weeks winning a lot of games. You could go a couple of weeks having a, you know, amazing hitting streak you know there, there's I think hitting is contagious in a sense of you know guys start getting hot you start you started to see you know candy scopey and those guys hitting the balls hard out in LA you started to see some of those guys starting to come around um you know and it's it's a crazy game because you can hit a ball hard and get out you know so you you, you continue to try to put together good at bats I think guys are coming around right now and I, I think uh you know the future's looking bright for us you play all outfield positions are mostly left and right you're now playing right field but you're left-handed what challenges does that pose? I mean, because, you know, you're – are you b go, catching the ball backhand a lot or do you line up differently or – Yeah, um, it, it can be – it can it can bring on some challenges. Uh, you know, if you get a righty, you're in right field, the ball can slice a little bit compared to hooking. If, you know, you're in left field, it can hook to you or it can slice away from you. So I think the ball's coming at you a little differently being in right compared to left. Um, but I – you know, in tw 2019, I got to play right field a lot with the Rays and I had a – a good feel for that. I didn't, didn't play it too much within the past couple of years, but you know, I had talked with AJ and I told him I was comfortable whether it be right field or left field, uh, you know, with Robbie being in left now, me being in right, or whether it's vice versa. Just continuing to get the reps in, you know, par different parks are different. Um, but I think for me, it's just been nice to be able to, to be out there every day um, in the outfield and continuing to work and continuing to to get to know the fields that I'm at, continuing to get to, um, you know, get to know my teammates and who's aggressive, who's not in the outfield and stuff like that. So you continue to learn and 
I think right place is a good place for me. You know, I had a little mishap in LA. I hit the fence pretty hard in, in right field. Uh, you know, that didn't feel too good. But you know, you, you you learn certain things like that, and you know, the ball was kind of slicing away from me, and I was going back, and it got in the sun, and all that, and all that. But you continue to learn out there. Uh, that's the beautiful beautiful thing about baseball is you continue to learn every day. Birthday cakes, chocolate, <laughs> marble, yellow, white. Or whatever in the heck red velvet is. I love red velvet. Oh, red velvet's good. Don't yeah. What is it? See it? What yeah, is it? Uh, it's so good. I'm a chocolate guy, but last night we went to dinner and I got carrot cake. Oh. Carrot Very cake is, is is dangerously good. It's did underrated. They, they, it's underrated. Yeah. Did no they put really, a candle? Did the whole they did a little? Yeah, sing they did a candle. You know, we were there was not many people there. It was a Monday night, but we got to experience the the uh, the quiet, you know, birthday. So it was just me and my wife. We went to dinner, got to celebrate it, and uh, yeah, carrot cake is underrated. It is. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I told you this at Little Caesars Arena, and I again, I to, I'm not going to touch you to make sure you're real, <laughs> but uh, but this was a great trade. I mean, I mean, super. I can't tell you how excited I think Tiger fans are mm-hmm. to watch you perform here, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you're a great you. dude, man. Thank he, you. I really even though you're it. you're a bold a Georgia Bulldog fan. Sorry, they're pretty good. He's from Georgia. <laughs> yeah, but Tampa doesn't have a football team. He's still just he's upset. He's a big or USF, Michigan fan. but he's I'm a more big of a Michigan fan. fan yeah, so he, it's still. He's no, I get a little, it. Yeah, Michigan's yeah. good. Yeah, they're good. Georgia. There, there you go. See, good yeah. too. See? I, I can't say, say I can't say good. much because we're in Michigan. Yeah, but there, uh, there if we're go. in Georgia right now, I would be saying more. You can knock Michigan State if you want. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, Austin, thank you so much thank for taking you. the thank time y'all to join for having us me. today. We appreciate it. I hope you don't have frostbite. And thank all of <laughs> yeah. you for tuning in to another edition of the Word on Woodward. We'll see you next time. <laughs>